we're going to look at the unboxing of a GM LS3 E-Rod motor today. Um, the crate before you is the crate that the engine came in, along with all of the associated parts. And Dylan is leaning on the crate right now. Um, we're preparing to go through a checklist. Here's the actual E-Rod engine. This is exactly how it ships. Comes in a layer of protective plastic with a layer of dry, crinkly paper on top. Um, it builds suspense for when you first see your engine. Ooh. <laughs> that is super cool. Here's a close-up of the engine's build plate. What it shows is that we have serial number 28 and the build date is 02 of 21. Here is a white box that contains a bunch of smaller parts. Um, again, everything that you see before you, everything that we're going to look at, all came inside of that OSB crate box. Um, it's a well-built little box and it's, on, it's stacked on top of a pallet and you have to take a few bolts out to open it up. And the first thing you see is there's a checklist that's sitting on top that shows you what's inside the box. Um, we could probably just read that list off, but um, we're going to go ahead and go through and look at some of the things. Here are the instructions. They come in an envelope. Um, so far, our finding is that the instructions are a lot better than nothing, but um, they probably tell you maybe 75% of what you need to know. So I wouldn't give them a very good grade. I guess that would be a C, right? Uh, the dogs you see before you are Shadow and Chewy in the background. Shadow is only a few months old at this point. <laughs> and he immediately finds some paper that he wants to drag off under that bike and start chewing on. Okay, what are those? Uh, mass air meter mounting patron, a jumper map sensor, and a jumper harness. Next we have the engine control module. Then we have a sensor and another sensor. Mass airflow sensor and oxygen density sensor. This white box contains the engine's wiring harness. This brown box it looks like it might have an air filter or something, but what it actually has is an all-electronic gas pedal, and it comes with the pedal part folded up so that it will fit in a smaller box. So you have to unfold the plastic pedal. Okay, now Dylan's dug up a couple of bags that have oxygen sensor mounting bosses, or bungs as they're sometimes called. This is a pretty important thing. This is the emissions compliance sticker that we have paid several thousand dollars extra to get. This box holds the exhaust manifolds. And as you can see, they're cast iron with heat shields. Okay, here's a look at the catalytic converters. They come pre-welded just like this. Um, now we're looking at the um, sort of the metal gasket that's supposed to seal it to the exhaust manifolds. As you can see, it's a little bit beat up from shipping. There's a clamp on the other end that is supposed to attach to the rest of the exhaust system. Now on this side, this is the, for probably the driver's side, the, the metal gasket is in a little bit better condition. Um, but what you also quickly notice is there's no clamp. Where's the clamp? Here it is. It's in this box. Those clamps come with their own bolts and nuts already attached. And if you look in the box, you'll see that there's still some nuts in there. So what are they for? They're for the, the studs that come off of this and uh, attach to the exhaust manifolds. Okay, this brown box that Dylan is holding in his hands is for the air filter element. The label just says element. This AC Delco box right here is for the charcoal canister that is for evaporative emissions. Um... The interesting thing about it is it's not a rectangle, it's, it's oddly shaped. 
And what we have left is stuff that was not on a checklist anywhere. I mean, the bag is clearly labeled, but you would call it odds and ends. Um, one thing you can see is the canister purge solenoid, my fingers on right there, and some exhaust manifold bolts.